And so kind of changing gears a little bit, of course, we have sort of tell, talked about the historiographical side of things. Um, maybe give us a little bit of a rundown of what, what was slavery like in the valley? Because I think for a lot of us, the valley is sort of like the kind of rolling landscape, kind of the ridges on both sides, sort of the mm -hmm. smaller farm environment that is not mm -hmm. necessarily like the cash crop environment that we are familiar with, with other parts of the South or Virginia. So mm -hmm. what did what slavery look like in the valley? Sure, yeah, I mean, you're right. So that it doesn't it doesn't look, you know, there aren't the the cash crops of, of cotton and tobacco and rice and those types of things in the valley. Staple crops, largely wheat and corn, um, rye, those types of things. But you know, the Shenandoah Valley, you can you can certainly argue to an extent that it that it looks to the outside observer, it looks different. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have, with a few exceptions, you don't have you know, very large plantations. Um, you have the average enslaver is, is maybe enslaving, you know, two to, to five uh, human beings. They're, they're working with those individuals side by side in the fields, uh, you know, doing whatever task it is. And so, yeah, from, from that regard, it, it looks very, very different than South Carolina or Tidewater, Virginia, or whatever the case is. Um, it looks different um numerically i mean you, you know you look at census data and again it's it's in 1860 20 21 percent of the population well if you go over to tidewater virginia it's it's well over you know 55 60 percent of the population but you know one of the things that i argue in the book is that slavery is is certainly vital to the shenandoah valley's economy and also, I think when you start to look at at the individual level, I don't think slavery is all that different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have you have enslavers who are doing things to protect their investment. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, some of the evidence I bring forth in the book discusses how enslavers would offer, you know, small little trinkets or incentives, financial rewards uh, to enslaved people. And and again, people would look at that superficially and say, well. The enslaver is doing that because he he or she uh, loves and, and wants to treat that enslaved person nicely. And, and the reality is you want to keep your enslaved people as happy as possible so that they don't run away um, and you're protecting that protecting that investment. Um, I think the, the brutality is still there in terms of, of mistreatment. You know, it's, it's hard to quantify. And I say this throughout the book. You know, I can't say that, you know, X amount of, of enslaved people were, were whipped or beaten or brutalized, but it occurs. Mm -hmm. um, it occurs in the valley. And again, challenges that, that long held tradition that um, slaves are treated better here. And also one of the things that, that I think you could argue is even worse in the valley uh, in, in terms of experiences for an enslaved person is that you don't have um, so on a, on a plantation, you, you could have a larger support network mm -hmm. for dealing with the difficulties of life. Right. Um, if you are an enslaved person in a household where there's only two or three other individuals with you, you don't have that, that large network to lean on. And, and I'll say that's, that's not something that, that I came up with on my own. You know, Warren Hofstra, who's a colleague of mine at Shenandoah, he actually taught me when I went to Shenandoah um, for my undergrad and he's a, he's a distinguished historian of, of early Virginia and colonial Virginia. And he made that point in one of his books, The Planting of New Virginia, mm -hmm. um, that in a lot of ways, slavery was a little bit more brutal because you don't have the, the, the personalities, you don't have the individuals to lean on as you would, as you would elsewhere. So yeah, I think in that, in that numerical sense, in that superficial sense from the you know, sense of the observer, it, it looks a little bit different but for the individual experience of the enslaved, uh, I would say there's no difference at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, an important aspect to consider there. And um, as we too, and hopefully a lot of other people, once they read the book will know is uh, there's still a lot to learn about the Shenandoah Valley and slavery mm -hmm. where plantations, mm -hmm. the few that we have are actually starting to to do more work on that subject matter. Mm -hmm. um, yep. 